Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today's video we're going to be going over how to create jump pads. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. Essentially we're going to run into a jump pad and what's going to happen is it's going to play a tiny animation at nothing major and it's going to launch us. So you can see it's going to go down, up, back down again and just fire us off like this. You can change how it looks, that's just a very basic one which I've made just to give it some visual aspects to it. And you can also change how far we're going to fly which direction, all that good stuff which you'd want. You can also add sound effects and everything. So it's very easy to customize. But I'm going to show you how to add up this basic part today. I do have other videos on different things. So if you wanted to maybe place this down so the player can place it down, sorry, they can build it. I do have videos going over how to do that as well. So this is what we make today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing I want to do is we obviously want to create this blueprint. So I'm going to right click in my content browser, go to blueprint class. I'm going to create an actor. I'm going to name this one jump pad BP like so. I'm going to open it up straight away. In here, in the viewport, what I'm going to do is add a component and add a cube. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be making this jump pad from scratch using cubes. But obviously if you have your own, which you've made in Blender or something, you can obviously use that as well. But I'm just going to be making one using two cubes. So I'm just going to scale this down a bit and then scale up this way, just so we get what we want, get it looking how we want. So I think looking like that is going to be fine for me, a nice basic looking jump pad like so. What I'm also going to do is move it up so it's like that and also move it to the side so that the middle of the blueprint is not in the middle of that cube. So the rotation point of the blueprint is going to be the center here, not the center of the cube. So also if you are using your own static mesh, you want to make sure you have that as well. Uh, so let me show you what I mean by that. I can just drag in this blueprint here and when I rotate it, it's going to rotate like that, not in the middle. It's going to rotate on the edge like so. And that's what you want to do. So I hope that makes sense. And we're going to go back into our blueprint here. And again, just to make it look a bit better, I'm going to add another cube like so. And I'm going to add this to the end over here, just so it looks like it's got something to stand on and what it's launching off of. Again, not necessary. I'm just doing it to make it look a little bit nicer. And what I'm also going to do is rotate this up so it's going to start there. So 10 Y, and I'm just going to move this up a bit as well so it's not going to be in the ground, like so. So that's going to work perfectly. And I move this one over here so it's underneath like that. And that is my very basic jump pad set up visually. That's what I want it to look like. But again, obviously you can change it so you can make your own static mesh, customize this to make it look however you like and however you want it to look. And what we want to do after we've done that is we're going to select the cube here, so just the actual jump pad mesh itself, add a component and we're going to add a box collision like so. And also this other cube I'm going to parent onto that like so as well. And this box collision what we want to do is move it up and just scale up so it's going to fit the size of this jump pad like so. So when the player hits this jump pad, so the box collision, that's when we're going to fire off. So again just make sure the box collision is the perfect size for this. I think that's going to be good. So when they touch the box collision, the box collision is going to trigger. So I want it to be that size like so. You can even maybe have it hanging off a little bit as well. But again, for me, this is what I want. I'm going to compile, save that. And I'm going to go over to the event graph now as that's all we need to do in the viewport. And in here, I'm going to delete these three nodes here, right click on my box collision, add an event and add on component to begin overlap. Because again, when we walk over and, and collide with this box collision, that's when we want to trigger this code. So out of other actor, what I'm going to do is cast to and then my character, which for me is the third person character, like so. But for you, this could be third, first, whatever you've named it. And what we're going to do first is we're going to set up animating it. So again, you might have your own animation, but I'm going to set mine up very basically like so. So after the cast, what I'm going to do is add a timeline like so. I'm going to name this jump pad animation TL for timeline like so. Making sure that goes into play from start like that. So I'm going to double click this to open it up and I'm going to change the length to be 0.5 seconds because that's how long I want this animation to take in total. But you can set this to be however quick or slow you want it to be. And what I want this to do is I want it to start in the middle, then go down, then go up, then go back down to the middle again like so. So it's kind of going down, flinging up and then going back to the starting position like so. So how we're going to do that is we're going to add a flow track. I'm just going to name this one launch track like so and again the length is 0.5 so what I'm going to do now is right click on here and add a key to curve float 
the time is going to be 0 because it's at the start and the value I want it to start in the middle so that's going to be 0 0.5 and then I'm going to right click again and add another key this time the time is going to be 0 0.25 so it's going to be halfway through and the value is going to be 1 or well, actually I'll do this the other way around so it looks like it makes a little bit more sense so I'll put that as 0 so it goes all the way down and then I'll right click add another key this time the time is going to be 0 0.35 and the value is going to be 1 and then right click add another key this time the time is going to be 0 0.5 so all the way at the end and a value of again 0 0.5 so it's starting back or ending back in the middle again so that might not look like it makes much sense now you can press these two buttons here to zoom to fit horizontal and vertical and now that should make a bit more sense so we start in the middle go down go up go back in the middle so again I kind of changed it halfway through because it was like this instead it went up down middle but I thought I'll do it this way because it looks like it makes more sense. I'll just need to flip the numbers around later on. But we haven't done that yet, so you don't need to worry about it. So again, imagine this line is the jump pad's trajectory. It's going to be here, level, go down, go up, and then end level again. So we compile and go back to the event graph. And then after it, we're going to right click and get a lerp, just a normal lerp under float, with the alpha being that launch track there. So this number of the launch track here is going to be this alpha ranging between 0 and 1 which is going to be A and B. So A is 0, B is 1. So A wants to be the angle of it being all the way up and B wants to be the angle of it being all the way down. So if we go back in here we can see that A wants to be the value of it being all the way down and B wants to be the value of it going all the way up. Because again 0, 1 like so. So let's go back and we can set those up now. So what I'm going to do is simply just minimize this and what I want to do is rotate this in the world. So we can see that we're going to rotate it on the Y axis. By default it's going to be at 0, so that's the middle, so that's perfect. All the way up is going to be 10, all the way down is going to be minus 10. You set that up to be whatever you like, but that's what I want it to be for me. 0 is perfect, 10 is up, minus 10 is down. So that's what I want, but you customize it to get it for what you want. So for me, A is going to be all the way down, so minus 10. B is going to be all the way up, so 10, and obviously 0 is halfway through those, so that works out to be perfectly in the middle, like so. And again, we rotated the actor there, so to actually rotate this, what we want to do is come out of update of the timeline and set actor rotation like so. But again, we only want to do this on the Y, so we can right click the new rotation, split the structure pin, and just connect the return value of the LERP into the new rotation Y, like so. Now for the X and Z, we don't want to leave them as zero. We want to make sure they are what it currently is now. So to do that, we can right click and get actor rotation. So no matter which direction this is placed in, doesn't matter which way it's facing, it's always going to stay facing the same direction. So X goes in there, Z goes in there. So the only value we are changing is the Y. So we're going to be rotating it up and down. So that there is going to play the animation for our jump pad. So we can hit play to test this out. We're not going to be launched yet, obviously, but we will have the animation working like so. It's going to go up and down like that. So that works perfectly. So now we need to actually set up launching the character. So to do that, we want to go back to our viewport because we want to add a component and we want to add in an arrow. And what I'm going to do is just change the arrow size to be five so we get a nice clear shot of it. And we also want to make sure this is facing that direction we want the player to launch in. So we obviously don't want them to launch that way, we want to launch them this way, the same direction the launch pad is facing, but I also want to fly them up. So I'm going to put it at about a 45 degree angle, like so, maybe a little less sharp, let's say that one there, like so. So the player is going to be launched in that direction when they're on the launch pad, which I think is going to be perfect for me, but again, set that up to be whatever you want. But that is going to work perfectly for me. So I'm going to compile and I'll go back over to the event graph like so. And that arrow is just used as a reference of where we want the player to go. And then also we can see it here so we know which way they're going as well. But you won't see that in game. Only the developer will see it as we are now. So I want to do this after the jump pad is finished playing because it's going to be all the way up. So that's when we want to launch them. So I'm going to do this off a of finished of this timeline. So I'm going to hold down O, left click to get a do once. Connecting that into the finished of the timeline like so and that's just to make sure that it doesn't constantly spam it we only want to do this once after we finish it and then we can reset it to continually do it again afterwards if we want 
and I'm also going to come out of the as third person character of this cast we've got at the very start over here and the first thing I want to do is want to make the character jump so we can just call function jump here which is a built-in function we have in our game and in our projects like so I'm just going to double click this line to get a rewrite node just to keep it looking nice and organized like so and again I want to make them jump just so they don't get too stuck in the floor of the jump pad so making them jump first just makes it look a lot better and after that I'm going to hold down D left click to get a delay and I'm going to leave the duration at 0 0.2 just so it's very quickly after we've jumped we're then going to actually properly launch them and to properly launch them I'm going to again come out the as third person character which for me is this blue dot here and I'm going to get launch character so it's again a nice little handy built-in function which we have to actually launch the character in our game how we want. Now the launch velocity is the velocity and the direction of where we want them to go because velocity is obviously speed and direction. So to figure out the direction we're going to use the arrow that we've just made. So we can drag and drop in the arrow there and simply get forward vector because the direction it's facing that we just set up is the forward vector of the arrow so that's where we want the player to go. And we can come out the return value get a vector multiplied by a float and this float here is how far you want them to actually travel. So I'm going to set it to 1500 because that's what I had earlier when I was testing it out. You can obviously change this to be whatever you want. The larger the number, the further they're going to go. The lower the number, the less far they're going to go. And we can compile, save that. And that is technically working, but this is only going to do it once. So how we're going to fix that is we're simply going to come out the launch character and go straight into the reset of the do once there. Again, I'm just going to get some rewrite notes here, like so. And that is going to make sure that it only does it once for how we want. Because the reason we have that is just in case the player gets on and off very quickly, it's going to redo it. So we want to make sure that we're only going to do it once. So this player isn't going to keep continually getting launched. So we can compile, save, and this should be the code now done and working for us. So let's hit play and test this out. We can go over, run over to it over here. And let's see, we're going to walk onto it, go down, go up. And that didn't quite work. I think we got lodged in it there. But then it did work. So I think that is because of the size of it. And because again, I'm using cubes in the start content, not an actual proper mesh. But if I were to just make this bigger, I might work a little bit better. So again, not ideal with the meshes I'm using, but it does work. The animation goes down, up, and then we get launched like so. Perfectly how we wanted this to work. I'm again, just going to put one of these over here just so I can then keep going back and forth to show this off how we want. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up a jump pad in which we have an animation going down and up and the player does get launched in the direction of the jump pad as well and we can use as many of these as we want, customize it to get it working how we want as well. And again that there is just because of the meshes I'm using, they're the start content cubes, not ideal for this so using your own static mesh will be a lot better and probably your own animation as well not just making one using timelines, but that does work. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.